Replay attacks are back. The potential to lose all of your Callisto and the upcoming Ethereum Classic airdrop is a potential threat. Find out how to mitigate this. The Bitcoin private Z Classic spork has occurred. Distribution has been completed and the mainnet is online. Find out what this means for you. The SEC distributes subpoenas to over 80 ICO companies. What does this mean for the larger crypto environment? Finally, we're going to dispel some idiots on Twitter, respond to criticisms about my calling the Callisto airdrop a smart ICO. And then finally, we'll look at some potential strategies that you could have utilized leading up to the Z Classic Bitcoin private hard fork. Welcome to the Kraken Crypto Hour. My name is Jay Wise Free. I'll be your host. Stay tuned. first story that we'll talk about, because I don't want to keep you guys waiting, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the issue regarding the Ethereum Classic Callisto airdrop coming up. Now here's the problem. There is a potential for for replay attacks on the Callisto chain. Because I don't really want to get into the long technicals of it. When you sign a transaction, you sign it with your private key. The hash generated is a result of your private key the recipient address, and the nonce, okay? The nonce is like a counter for how many transactions have occurred, how many outgoing transactions have left a wallet or an address. Now, when the Callisto airdrop happens at block uh, 550,000, the nonce set for the Callisto Genesis block will be zero which if you have sent your Ethereum Classic to any wallet and you have not sent an outgoing transaction from that wallet, that means your nonce will also be zero. That means that after the airdrop, if you have Ethereum Classic and Callisto in your wallet, if you go to send your, your Ethereum Classic to, a, to an address, somebody can take that, that uh, transaction broadcasted on the Ethereum Classic chain copy your nonce, copy your your signature, and send your CLO without your permission. So this is a a serious concern. Nobody's really talked about it. Uh, It has come up on Reddit, and this is where I came across this. Um, There is a simple fix. There is a very, very simple fix. If you are holding your Ethereum Classic in a wallet in anticipation of the airdrop, all you have to do is one simple thing. Send an outgoing transaction. That's all you have to do. Send the smallest possible tiny amount of Ethereum Classic somewhere, whether to another wallet or a friend or Bitrix. I don't care. If you send just one very little teeny, a big or small, but you could just point zero 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 one, whatever. Send a little bit of Ethereum Classic out of that wallet, and that will raise your nonce to one, and it will completely mitigate this problem for you going forward. All right? So I want to thank... Uh, monster221 uh, on the reddit board for posting the most comprehensive uh, talk about this but he did not talk about the solution um so uh, i I don't want to take complete credit for that um obviously if you understand this stuff that that solution for the nonce issue was quite simple just send an outgoing transaction but there are other people that are posting about this on the callisto and ethereum classic reddit so shout out to them as well All right, our next story, top story of the hour, the SEC subpoenas. So the SEC has issued 80 subpoenas to companies and uh, individuals uh, associated with ICOs. Some of them are advisors, some of them are lawyers, some of them are companies. We're not exactly sure what because we don't know who all uh, were subpoenaed. We don't have those records. Everybody that's speaking about this is speaking off the record. You know, one thing, it says 80 companies or individuals. Well, if they're companies, uh, that's a lot of companies. But if they're individuals, I mean, we could just be talking about a handful of firms, uh, advisory firms, accounting firms, uh, legal firms. Um, We could just be talking about a handful of companies. I don't really think we're talking about a grand scale of of just a ton of ICOs. You know, the SEC is definitely going to dip their toe in the water cautiously here. They have prosecuted some ICO companies before for being straight up fraudulent, but you know, this is just a sign of the SEC attempting to arm their way in to the 
larger crypto sphere at large. You know, they want to get in, they want to have control. They don't mind. The government doesn't mind people making lots of money as long as they're making lots of money too. And right now the government isn't making any money off Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies and God willing, they won't, but you know that they're going to try. You know, one thing that we do know uh, because of their PR is that Overstock.com was targeted in this uh, subpoena release. Now, Overstock.com is a early adopter of, of cryptocurrency. They really like cryptocurrency over there. Um, they're, they're CEO. Um, and they have an upcoming ICO called T0. Now, T0 is about as above board as you can possibly get when it comes to SEC regulation. It is an exchange, a trading platform for tokenized securities. They want to you know, help uh, facilitate the exchange and trade of tokenized securities. They're only selling to accredited U.S. investors. They've done their due diligence and it's over stock.com. You know, they've got lots and lots of money to throw at um, to, to throw at this. You know, it will be interesting to see who else they target. Now, one thing that I did find interesting in this article is that they specifically state that one of the pieces of information that the SEC was looking for was investors. Now, I'm sure that they're going to target on large investors. They're interested to see who in the traditional financial system is dipping their toe pretty heavily in the ICOs. Um, but uh, if you're a retail investor, just your mom and pop investing in ICOs, hoping it'll moon, I would. this would be concerning for me. I would be definitely, I would definitely be cautious about my digital security. Um, you know, and this has long-term implications as well because, uh, and we've seen this with the internet and with cybersecurity. You know, the internet was developed in the United States. The United States government came down really hard on cypherpunk and hacking, and we, so we just saw a lot of that immigrate outside of the United States. And we see a lot of the innovation now not coming from the United States, uh, and and that's um, that's really unfortunate. So. I think that long term, what this will do, though, is is move is will facilitate the 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 speed. Up. It will facilitate the increase of the immigration of innovation in the crypto world out of the United States. And I really think that's unfortunate. You know, the, the ham handed approach the government always takes to stuff because the government is a blunt in all their agencies. They're blunt instruments, and the only weapon that, that they have to exercise is force, unfortunately. So, uh, let's talk about Bitcoin Private now. Uh, let's see here. They have a nice post on Reddit here, uh, where they release, where they list all the information about how to access their, their main net. Um, you can, uh, they have the link to download the source code for their full nodes so that you can run that. Um, they say ensure point, ex excuse me. They say that you must have port 7933 open on your server or network. And then you just run the BTCP daemon and that will, um, allow you to access the full node. You can start mining. Um, they've got kind of a shill here for mining on the, the developer donation pool, which is 0% fee for the next two weeks. And then one and a half fee, all proceeds go to Bitcoin private development. That's like an Ethereum type thing. Uh, I'm not really big on that. I don't think that you need to have uh, uh, developer rewards and things like that. It's, there's, not only is there a potential for abuse, but I think that the best PR, I think the best advocacy and growth and outreach of a, of a project or a token um, should grow organically because that's how Bitcoin grew. Bitcoin never had a marketing budget or a, a developer fee or any of that stuff. And it grew to where it is now just, just wonderfully. So um, I'm not really big on that, but there, there's also a good argument that could be made for it. So I'm not going to come down too hard on that. Um, let's see. They're uh, supporting Windows, Mac and Linux. Um and all the instructions for how to claim your BTCP from your Z Classic private key and your Bitcoin private key are on there. So um, just to let you guys know, having dealt with forks before and splitting of uh, private keys, um, what you want to do is uh, definitely, definitely, if you're doing this with your Bitcoin, you want to move your Bitcoin out of that wallet, out of that private key control address um, into another address with a different private key. All right. It's very important for those of you using while it's like Armory, don't just don't just reuse a don't just send it to another address that has the same private key. Make sure that you send it to a different wallet, different public address with a different private key that controls the signature. Make sure you do that. Um, and probably for Z Classic, too. But Z Classic is so worthless now. It probably matters very little. Um, and then you can go in there and, and import your private key right into the uh, right into the. Uh, Bitcoin private desktop wallet. So uh, they have instructions for Electrum, Coinami, Electrum Multisig. So you guys are good to go. Um, let's talk about 
Our next story, which I think is interesting, the Marshall Islands is the most recent nation to make crypto an official currency. So the uh, Marshall Islands, the Republic of the Marshall Islands, passed a law approving the launch of Sovereign, the first cryptocurrency issued as legal tender by a sovereign nation. Now, the reason they say that in the article is that they argue that the Petro is, although it's a currency of Venezuela, um, the Venezuelan government has not actually made it their legal tender. And the Republic of Marshall Islands have. They have voted. It's done. They have made uh, the sovereign, their new cryptocurrency, their legal tender. Now, the way they're going to distribute it is through an, uh, an ICO coming up in 2018. Now, it says here that they're going to have a, a supply cap at 24 million tokens. Uh, and they chose that number to reference the 24 municipalities of... Um, of the Marshall Islands. So this is cool. This is really exciting. You know, um, Venezuela was one thing, but this is actually, you know, a different country adopting cryptocurrency as their legal tender. I mean, this people, do you see how fast this is growing? I mean, 2018 guys, you know, buy and hold some, some Bitcoin. If you've got other cryptocurrencies that you favor to buy and hold them, buy and hold them, baby, because we are going somewhere. We are changing the world. We are changing how money works. And this is amazing innovation. And I am excited, excited to be a part of this. Sorry, I had to take a video cut for a cookie. It's uh, demanding work. You got to stay nourished. Okay, now, <clears throat> a couple things. Now, the U.S. currently sends $60 million in foreign aid to the Republic of Marshall Islands every year. But in 2023, that number is going to be cut in half to $30 million. Now, the entire nation's budget is $100 million. So you're talking about nearly a third of their budget is going to be gone in just five years. So I think this is a good uh, move for Marshall Islands. Um, I think it would also be a good move if they made it obviously more um, obvious that they're blockchain oriented, you know, move here, but you know, generous tax benefits, this is going to be great for their economy. So uh, for those of you wondering why the United States sends $60 million for the foreign aid to the Republic of Marshall Islands, it is interesting to note that from 1946 to 1958, the United States used the Marshall Islands as a testing ground for nuclear weapons. So you know, that is one of those forms of uh, foreign aid that I'm, I kind of get. Okay, so let's turn to what I want to talk about here. Now, there's a little bit of controversy on Twitter regarding the best way that you could have played the Z Classic Hard Fork. And I'm going to let you know the best possible way that you could have played the Z Classic Hard Fork is this. The best possible thing you could have done during the Z Classic Hard Fork, in my opinion, is if you would have bought at the bottom and sold at the top. If you were lucky enough to purchase Z Classic um, pretty much any pretty much any time last year. Yeah, pretty much well any time. Yeah, pretty much any time last year. If you were lucky enough to purchase any Z Classic uh, and you wrote it up, you would have gotten amazing um, just absolutely stellar moon ROI to the to the amount that you can't even possibly imagine. Now I don't think a lot of people did that. I know a couple people who did, um, but I also know a couple of people who bought it at the top, or excuse me, bought it at the bottom and held that until February uh, February twenty eighth to get their B private, and then they dumped it when they still made amazing amounts of money. So it's just a matter of opinion. Um, but I definitely think that if you did not, if you did not, uh, if you did not buy it in 2017 and it was already January before you heard of it, okay, the best thing that you could have done, the 1st of January, let's look here, <clears throat> the 1st of January, the lowest price on the 1st of January, well, if you would wait until the 2nd, so the lowest price you could have gotten in at was about 0 0.0039 give or take. And if you would have rode that to the top, you would have made 397%, all right, off your trade. Okay, great return. Now, if 
you were lucky enough to sell at the top of the dump, you would have gotten 117, about 118%. Great trade. Okay. If you didn't, if you could, if you, if you stalled out, I mean, you could have lost 70% on your trade. Now I understand what you're saying. You're going to make up for that in your Z, in, in, in your, um, in your in your Bitcoin private gains, but what is the point of taking a chance on on some hard fork that most people don't know anything about? What is the point of taking the chance on that? Why is it not better to just make over a hundred percent on a trade and then trade Bitcoin private when it comes out? I don't uh, I don't understand the logic here. Now there is a certain there is a certain logic to this. If you're a buy and hold kind of guy and you typically have a lot of capital um, and you have a longer time frame, then I don't disagree with you. But I think a lot of people are berating these traders and calling them stupid for trying to sell at the top. You're not stupid. They were trading and probably the only way they could with the amount of capital that they had. They can't just take a hit like that and wait for this long term ROI on Bitcoin private, which may or may not work out. You know, if you bought in 2017 and you held, I mean, yeah, you had plenty of wiggle, there, not even wiggle room, you had plenty of time to, um, or excuse me, plenty of incentive, you know, but that margin of window on that one day, I mean, you went from 0 0.0117 all the way down to double zero one one. I mean, that's crazy, absolutely crazy. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you would have lost 90% in one day. You had the potential to do that, you know? So, <sighs> rough. Now, I'm going to show you some charts to back up my claim of why I think it was better to sell the top. So, we're going to look at a chart of Bitcoin gold. Okay, and if you look at Bitcoin Gold, you see that Bitcoin Gold launched and then it dumped, okay, until a certain point when we got, well, we didn't really get a reversal candle. Well, we kind of got a weak hammer candle, but you know, we started trading about that. We had some, excuse me, we had some bullish signs here. And you can see here that we reversed. And if you would have uh, tried to accumulate during the dips, because I mean, you know, from when it launched, I mean, it dropped almost 50%, so you, you, over 50%. So you definitely had a good opportunity to accumulate a dip there, 50% cheaper. And then you had the opportunity to make a, uh, you know, a, a very, very profitable trade there, uh, a very profitable trade, and then sell out, and then accumulate more. There's plenty of opportunities for, for trades down here as we go. Um, so I don't... Uh, and, and we'll look at Bitcoin Diamond. You know, we made over 700% on, on Bitcoin Diamond, you know. And, uh, you know, granted, uh, we held Bitcoin Diamond um, through the fork. But we got it for free. It was a Bitcoin and hard fork, you know. But I wouldn't have ran out. My point is, you should already have Bitcoin. But I wouldn't have ran out to buy anything just to get a fork. Because you're going to get dumped on. It happens every single time. If you're not lucky enough to get in at a price where you buy so low that when it, that wherever you happen to get caught in the dumping, you're still going to be in the green, unless you can say that with certainty, I think the best option for you to do is to try to get out at the top. And then if you want to trade the new thing, the Bitcoin private or whatever might have you. I think that uh, you should just buy it on a dip and trade it. That's your best option. Don't get wrecked. So many noobs got wrecked trying to hold through this fork and they just heard about it. They're like, oh, I'll buy some of this and I'm going to make so much money. And then they took like a 70% cut. And you don't know if they're going to make their money on Bitcoin private. When's it going to launch on an exchange? What's the what's the, what's the launch price going to be? They're saying five hundred dollars. It's going to launch at five hundred dollars. Hell no, hell no. I highly doubt it. I don't think it's going to happen. Don't think it's going to happen. Look at the price that Bitcoin Gold launched at. Look at the price that um, 
Bitcoin Diamond launched at? No, it's not going to happen. It might, it might, it might run up to five hundred dollars. Launching at five hundred dollars. I don't know. We'll see. We'll keep our eye open. I'm always, uh, I'm always open to opinions, guys. All right. Finally, I want to touch on some controversy regarding me, guys, because you know I hate to talk about myself. Now, there were some comments on Reddit and in the YouTube comments, uh, and some emails that we got saying that. Um, uh, the Callisto airdrop is not a smart ICO. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a side chain. Don't you know what a side chain is? Do you guys know what the hell nuance is? You guys know about the word meta or bigger picture? Listen, guys, here's the thing. Let me drop some Ty Lopez style knowledge on you, okay? Um, listen, Ethereum Classic is having an airdrop called Callisto. It is being revitalized by uh, the Ethereum Commonwealth Project developers. Okay, that's all well and good and fine, okay? I'm well aware of the difference between a sidechain and an ICO. But here's the thing. Don't you think that the Ethereum Commonwealth developers have large holdings of Ethereum Classic and it's to their financial incentive to airdrop a token on themselves and other Ethereum Classic holders? A token that will hit exchanges and probably be dumped as quickly as it was thought up. Don't you think that they're going to have the potential to make a lot of money off printing their own money and then selling it to people who want to buy it? That's not smart. No, it's not an ICO. It's not an initial coin offering. What the heck do you want to call it? They're giving tokens out for free to Ethereum Classic holders, which they have a lot of, and then they're going to turn around and sell it on an exchange. Now, I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but that's what I'm saying I'm going to do. That's, that's what I'm going to do. And I think that's what almost all the traders and speculators are going to do. And we're all traders and speculators, baby. Not all of us. I mean, listen, I, I jest, okay? I, I am a Bitcoin maximalist. The only reason I'm doing all this is, is, to, uh, is to get more Bitcoin. That's it. You know, I didn't... <clears throat> That's, that's, that's the name of the game. Get more Bitcoin. Uh, and, and also because there's a large demand for it. You know, I see a lot of people running around with the, like a chicken with their head cut off, not knowing how to trade, and they mess up the market. And I'm out here trying to help. Believe it or not. Yes, I mean, um, obviously it's, it's financially rewarding for me. But, I mean, I help people make money. What the fuck do you do? So anyways, um, uh, you know, this is free money for people who hold Ethereum Classic. Now, let's talk about the technicals of Callisto for just a second. It's being implemented and, and it's, it's going to be a new blockchain of its own with its own native cryptocurrency called Callisto, CLO, would be the ticker name. Now, there are talks about allowing it to have, well, they're saying it's going to have cross-chain implementation with Ethereum Classic and that Ethereum Classic users can actually interact with the Callisto sidechain. But that's not even that's not even there yet. That's all theoretical. That's not there yet. What are you talking about? You're talking about this like it's gospel. Do you work for Desdoran? I mean, get out of here, dude. Um, I mean, I for all we know, Callisto is going to be dumped on the exchanges as soon as it's listed, just like everything else, before it's accumulated and then pumped. Now, one of the reasons behind Callisto, the, the two reasons behind Callisto are a there is a feeling in the Ethereum Classic community that uh, there is no financial incentive for holders because there's not, and that all the governance uh, and voting power rests with the miners, which it does. Um, and they want to change that. They want to provide a financial incentive for people to just hold their Ethereum Classic in their own wallet, and in this case, Callisto, in their own wallet uh, and, and hodl it. Uh, and that will um, help to grow the appeal of Ethereum Classic Callisto as a store of value token as opposed to a smart contract token like Ethereum. Now, um, that's great. Um, I like the concept of cold staking. I, you know, it's never, we're going to see if it works. It sounds cool, but you've got to show us, you know. So um, there's that. And also, uh, keep in mind, you have to keep your, if you're going to cold stake, you have to hold your, uh, Callisto in your wallet for a period of time. At this time, it's a month. That's the default limit. They can raise that if they want to. Now, the other concept for Callisto, the other reason for it is to um, 
is to test different methods of implementations of protocol on the Callisto as a test net for Ethereum Classic. So they want to try something out on Ethereum Classic, but they know it's going to take a lot of time to get through the process to actually get implemented in a, in a protocol update. Well, they'll try it on, on, on Callisto because it's not as user heavy. There's not a lot of, as money in it, of money in it as, as Ethereum Classic. So they'll use Callisto. So it's a test net. That's what you're saying. You're building a test net to test new things. And the first new thing you're going to try out is this cold staking thing. So what is on paper? What, what's in reality that works? Nothing. You're pitching us a theory. Okay. And the Ethereum classic, the Callisto sidechain um, smart ICO is going to be rolled out soon. And, and I'm sure it's going to work and everything under the hood will be okay. But we'll see how all these different protocols work. And we'll see all the other different wonky things that they want to try out on the Callisto sidechain moving into the future. We'll be. Um, you know, Litecoin was is heralded as a test net for Bitcoin, and Litecoin's done very well, and will do much much better in the future, I believe. So that's fine. I have no I have no issue with this stuff, but but if you don't think that for the majority of people who are getting in on this Ethereum Classic airdrop, uh, that it's for the money, that it's for the pump, then then you're crazy. And if you don't think that that's not that that couldn't be a potential incentive for the develop, uh, listen, I think that developers generally have good hearts and, and try to make cool stuff. Um, and I think that the ones that are in it for the money are quickly weeded out, but there's so much of them and the weeding process has been so slow. We'll see what happens with the SEC and with this bear market, but um, there's definitely the, I mean, to think that they don't think it's going to be nice to get their, uh, their dividends if they want to sell out. I mean, you're living in dreamland. People are flawed, uh, mostly awful, sometimes awesome. That's that's what I like to say. And just to be perfectly clear, just to be perfectly clear, unlike most things, I am actually going to be holding my Ethereum Classic through the through the airdrop in my Classic Ether wallet that I have sent uh, 0 .001 uh, ETC out of. So that my nonce was jacked up to one, and uh, and I'm gonna go through the airdrop. Now this does contradict what I was just talking about with Z Classic. This is not my typical strategy, but and and to be to be frank, I, I am advising some other people to do, to do differently. But you got to think about when I got into Ethereum Classic as opposed to when when the people that I'm advising got into Ethereum Classic or where you got into Ethereum Classic. Um, if you're just getting into Ethereum Classic now, sell at the top. Sell two or more days before the airdrop whenever you see the uh, the value going down for the traders and speculators on the exchanges dumping it. Sell. And then if you're interested in the Callisto token, pick it up on the cheap. It's prob I don't know how valuable it's going to be. I mean, this is – it's a cool project, and it's, you know, a nice, nice airdrop on, on Ethereum Classic holders. But I don't buy into this like, it's all worth it for the free dividends. It's not worth the trouble. It's not worth the trouble. Now, I'm going to be holding my Ethereum Classic because I bought my Ethereum Classic so cheap it doesn't matter how far it drops now. And also because um, I'm long-term bullish on Ethereum Classic and it just makes more sense for me to get more value out of my personal um, position size in Ethereum Classic. You know What I'll do with the, with the Callisto, I'll, I'm a patient trader. I'll wait and see what happens. I don't, I don't overreact unless I have good cause to. So, but there's nothing wrong with dumping it on day one. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I've done that many, many times. So, you know, I think, obviously I've talked about in my previous videos how I think that a lot of the mining power that Ethereum currently enjoys is going to migrate over to Ethereum Classic with the implementation of the Casper protocol and proof of stake. So look forward to that. So that is my response to some of the criticisms. Uh, about uh, me calling it a smart ICO, and I will continue to do so. So you can call me ignorant, and uh, I will call you uh, living on a dream. So thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Does the bear market got you down? Are you feeling worried? Have you been holding on to an altcoin bag for far too long, hoping for summertime booms, but all it's been is winter and springtime busts? 
why don't you head on over to our Discord server or our website, crackingcryptocurrency.com, and an invite link to the Discord server will be in the notes section down below. Um, hop on, join us. We've got a lot of traders, a lot of investors, a lot of just crypto lovers and miners on there talking all the time. You can find a, a channel that you like and, and, and fit in and ask questions. Feel free to DM me or any other of the other admins. Uh, we'll be happy to help you out and introduce you to the community. Um, we're excited to see you guys grow. Hope to see you in there, guys. Thank you. JY is free.